bright, sunshiny day. Who's ready for spring? Yes, definitely. If you can and are able and are willing, please stand for the intro this morning. Blessed be your name, and we're going to get it right. <laughs>
and uh, sometimes we don't understand why he acts the way he does and takes away things, but uh, he knows why, and we'll find out someday. Let's start things off with prayer and uh, get things started. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for this perfect day, this perfect weather you're providing, Lord. It could be just a tad warmer. Uh, Lord, we pray for Caleb as he preaches your word today. May your words be pleased, his words be pleasing, Lord. Uh, we pray for Michael as he is liturgist today. Lord, uh, we just pray that you're pruning us and our branches always has a reason, and we know that it does, Lord. And Lord, we just pray for safe travels home for everybody. And Lord, we pray and ask this in your name. Amen. And would you please stand for our opening hymn?
So Leslie's friend Gloria is doing much better and getting ready to move to rehab. Yeah, for, they said it was two weeks. Okay. Anyone else? Here are Jerry. I'm sorry. Continued prayers for Marty Rothrock. Right. I guess she's not going to do rehab, but she is at home. Yeah. Slowly. She's starting to do a little bit better, although she's on blood thinner, and that's creating some difficulties. So let's continue praise for Marty and also Rocky. Could use the prayers. How many, how many have wondered how they even pray for the situation in Turkey? The latest uh, that I've heard is that there have been 28,000 that have been killed. And uh, I, I looked it up on the internet uh, today. And so um, I don't know how you're praying, but these are some things that I thought that we could pray for in regard to that. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, have prayer especially for Turkey uh, right after I, I share these uh, ways of praying. And it may be that one of these ways really uh, grabs your heart. And so uh, I just want to read through these. Um, for those that are mourning, uh, there are a lot of folks that are mourning. I, I saw a picture of a dad who was holding his daughter's hand, the daughter had died, they couldn't get her out. And uh, you, you know, there are those that are mourning, and we can always pray that God would bring comfort to those that are mourning. Um, for those without shelter or the necessities of life, um, for the rescue workers, Scott, um, when the fire took place in Fremont, really reminded us of the effect that uh, tragedies have on the rescue workers, those that are, um, in this case, pulling people out of the rubble. Uh, so let's be praying for them. That the church in the area, uh, the church around the world, actually, would demonstrate the love of Jesus in practical ways. Uh, pray for the hospital workers and the medical professionals. How about this one? For red tape to be cut through. Uh, so that help could uh, be delivered. And then um, that any alive still beneath the rubble would be found. I, I read a report that one girl was pulled out uh, alive after 147 hours. Uh, and then a man was pulled out after 149 hours. Uh, but uh, let's just uh, pray uh, for the people of Turkey right now. We'll, we'll praise the island and then I'll I'll pray. Lord, we do pray for those in Turkey and Syria and the surrounding areas that have been affected by the earthquake. God, so many have lost their lives. So many are, are in mourning. So many are injured. Lord, so many are participating in the rescue efforts, the recovery efforts. God, we pray uh, that somehow you could bring good uh, out of this tragedy. And Lord, I, I pray that folks would be drawn uh, close to you. Lord, I, I would pray, uh, God, that the different agencies would be able to work together for, for the good of all. And uh, Lord, thank you that e even though we're thousands of miles away, that uh, God, we can pray and uh, know that you hear and answer prayers. God, we give you praise for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, another praise that I, I just wanted to share with you, I, I don't know if anybody has um, seen any reports from Asbury University. Uh, it's where I went to school. It was Asbury College back then. 
uh, back in the Stone Age when I was there. But uh, uh, Asbury has had a history of revivals breaking out among the students that have been kind of unplanned that's usually at a chapel service or after a chapel service. And on Wednesday, some students stayed after chapel and, and prayed at the altar and they were joined by more students who were joined by more students who were joined by uh, parents and pastors uh, from all over the place. Actually, uh, uh, Tim Helm, uh, my dear friend who I met at Asbury College, he's a adjunct professor at Indiana Wesleyan University and I used in a bus of students, busload of students down uh, to Asbury, and um, God's evidently doing a work there. And uh, let's pray that that continues, that uh, students' hearts are touched. The last big revival was in 1970, uh, and I'm not saying that this caused the Jesus Movement, but it was about the same time that the Jesus Movement in the early 70s started. And, uh, and so God's doing something. God's up to something. And uh, we can pray that that continues. Uh, we also want to pray uh, for Aaron Magda uh, uh, and Petra Zoe, uh, and that that ministry would continue. Her sister Jessica is getting ready to uh, do a church plant. An African church uh, from Uganda is actually planning a church in North Carolina or South Carolina. Uh, they're coming as missionaries to the United States. And uh, we just need to pray uh, for Aaron and her sister and the whole Petra Zoe ministry. Uh, the, within the Walls ministry that we're praying for is uh, our food pantry. We're also praying for Madison Watkins, uh, our pianist. Uh, and then we're praying for uh, Pastor Donna and the Orland United Methodist Church and uh, Pastor Rich and Restoration Ministries. And then, uh, some good news, uh, a praise and a prayer concern is uh, Caleb and Mallory are moving to Angola. <laughs> and so, Debbie and I have moved uh, a fair amount, being a United Methodist pastor and such. Uh, and uh, movement's always kind of bittersweet. And, and I think uh, Ronan especially is probably having little bit of difficulty because he's going to be leaving a school, you know, and, and leaving friends. And, and so let's pray for the whole family. Uh, pray uh, that the move goes exceedingly well. And uh, Lord, that Roman adjusts to, have you got him enrolled in a new school yet? Or are you going to work on that? Yeah, so let's, let's pray that it goes really well for the kids. Would you join me in singing the prayer song?
God, we do thank you that you are able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ask or dream. We thank you that none of us can imagine, no eye can see, no ear can hear the things that you have prepared for those that love you, for those that are seeking your face, for those that are endeavoring to love you with all that we've got and uh, love others as you have loved us. Lord, thank you that we get to partner with you in, in what you're doing in the world. And that one of the ways that we do that is through prayer. Lord, we thank you for answers to prayer, even today. Thank you, uh, God, for Esther's recovery. Thank you uh, for Gloria being uh, ready to go to rehab. Uh, thank you, uh, Lord, for uh, Margie being a home now. And uh, Lord, uh, we pray that you would speed all of their recoveries. God, there are uh, things that are on all of our hearts. Some of it is personal. Some of it is concern for family and friends. But Lord, you have invited us not to be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication to make our requests known to you with thanksgiving. And so Lord, we're going to do that right now. Brothers and sisters, would you just lift up uh, two or three things that are heavy on your hearts right now? Just ask that God would intervene, that God would rule and reign in those situations, in those people's lives. Ask that God would uh, bring good out of uh, whatever difficulty, whatever problems going on. today, uh, God, that you would just uh, rule and reign in Aaron and uh, Jessica's lives and in Collins and uh, little Collins' life. Uh, God, empower the ministry of Petrosilli, especially help them as they minister to young moms and, and pregnant uh, teenagers. Lord, I, I pray that their ministry would be life-giving. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would continue to help us with the food pantry. Lord, may we uh, be a church that um, honors you by taking care of those that are on the margins of life. And uh, Lord, I pray that you would bless the cooks, bless the buyers, bless the baggers, bless the distributors, and uh, Lord, bless the clients that come week after week. Lord, we would pray for Madison and, and Jonah. Lord, just rule and reign in their lives. Uh, provide for their every need. Thank you for the blessing that Madison is to this congregation. Lord, we would pray for uh, Pastor Donna and the Orland United Methodist Church. Bless them as they worship this Sunday. And Lord, we pray the same for Pastor Rich and Restoration uh, Ministries. God, we pray that you would uh, continue to do a mighty work down at Asbury and May. And that work spread throughout the land, spread throughout the world. God, I also would ask that you'd be with Caleb and Mallory and Roman and Olive and Charlie as they move. Uh, God, may this bittersweet time, uh, God, uh, lead to uh, a wonderful season of ministry and life uh, for the Austin family. Now, Lord, teach us to pray as you taught your disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
now is the time that we're going to have the offering. Would you flip to the um, four slide? Um, I, for those of you who uh, aren't necessarily, haven't been raised in the United Methodist Church, UMCOR stands for the United Methodist Committee on Relief. And whenever there's a disaster in the world, uh, UMCOR shows up and helps uh, with the recovery uh, process and uh, the rebuilding process. Uh, one of the great things about UMCOR is that Every dollar that is given for a, a disaster actually goes for that relief. Uh, they handle their administrative costs in other ways. And, and so uh, one of the practical ways that we can help, in addition to prayer, uh, the situation in Turkey, is if God lays it on your heart uh, to give towards Uncor and, and what they're doing. So uh, just so, I just wanted you to be aware of that. Uh, if you want to write a check or put cash in, uh, uh, an offering envelope, just be sure to write the memo line of the check, uh, Turkey Relief, and make it out to AUMC, and then uh, just put it on, uh, if it's cash, just put on the offering envelope, uh, Uncord uh, Turkey Relief, okay? mentioned that this time overseer we'll ties in our offers. <laughs> plans for us, your followers, that are for our good and for your glory. You said, give, and it will be given to you, for in the same measure as you give, it will be given to you again. We give to you today as a response to your goodness to us. We ask that you receive these offerings we place before you now. May your peace reign in our lives, surround us, and empower us. In your almighty name. You may see.
please rise for the scripture reading. Today we read from Luke 4, verses 14 through 30. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son? they asked. Jesus said to them, Surely you will quote this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. And you will tell me, do here in your hometown what we have heard that you did in Capernaum. Truly I tell you, he continued, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. I assure you that there were many widows in Israel in Elijah's name, time, I'm sorry, when the sky was shut for three and a half years and there was a severe famine, famine throughout the land. Yet Elijah was not sent to any of them, but to a widow in Zarephath, in the region of Sidon. And there were many in Israel with leprosy in the time of Elisha, the prophet. Yet not one of them was cleansed, only Naaman the Syrian. All the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this. They got up, drove him out of town, and took him to the brow of the hill on which the town was built in order to throw him off the cliff but he walked right through the crowd and went on his way this is the word of the lord references. 
Lots of prophecies that said what the Christ would do. But they're more different than we are in that if I gave you a verse and said, what does this mean? You would have an answer. I would have an answer. This person would have an answer. So there became these schools of thought around what the Christ would do and what he would be like. In this scripture that Jesus read in the synagogue, It ended up being called the Messiah's Mandate. You see, they took, this is one of the scriptures that they took as like, absolutely, when the Messiah comes, he will do this. Now, 400 years is a long time to wait. We don't want to wait like 15 minutes. <laughs> we would like our prayers microwave, please. <laughs> and you know, the longer that you wait, the more you anticipate, but also uh, the more that you speculate. Right? See, they believed the promise of God was true, that the Christ was coming, that he would be anointed preach good news to the poor. Freedom to the captives was one of those lines that they like they really grabbed onto this. Healing for the broken heart. But release to the captives was like very personal in that moment. Now we cannot imagine this because we all of us are here now in America. We cannot imagine being ruled by a foreign government. But at the time, the Jewish people were ruled by the Romans. And so it was really hard not to take this verse and put it in their own context. And to go, release to the captives means there will be a revolution. Just like there was in Babylon, when we set free from the Romans, we'll finally get our own nation again. We'll finally get our own place again. We will receive the promised land again. And so they, they grew in anticipation, but they also grew in speculation. And what happened was they had this firm idea of what the Christ would be. So when Jesus stands up in the synagogue in his hometown, it's not, not a great place to preach in the first place. When he stands up in his hometown and says the Messiah's mandate, which they knew, it wasn't like a new scripture. This was one of the ones that everybody's holding to their hearts, going, God, do this. God, set us free. When he reads this out to them, then sits down and says, this word of the Lord that you have waited to be fulfilled is fulfilled today. Well, they didn't like that at all. Because they knew Jesus. And he had not shown any signs or symptoms of being a military leader. He had not shown any signs or symptoms of being the one who had set them free from the Romans. Regardless of what he had taught, regardless of the signs that had been seen around his ministry, they were looking for what they were looking for. And because of that, they were missing what was actually showing up. They wanted their Christ, not be Christ, and so I ask you this morning if you want to see a move of God. And I ask you, are you looking for your move of God or are you looking for the move of God? This is so important for where we are right now because we are at a pivotal moment at AUMC. And it hinges on whether we are willing to not 
dictate to God what he should do. <clears throat> but that when we come with surrendered expectations, but great anticipation <clears throat> for what he will do next, that God will be God in this place and do what only God can do. We have already done what we can do. Yes? Do we not? But that God will be God in this place means that we come like an intense 10 minutes beginning. I'm going to kind of transition out of that a little bit. But I want you to think about the, the things that you've seen God do in this place. Because he's not done. It's not over. You're still here. We're still here. Do you know why my family is moving to Angola? My parents live in Fort Wayne. We're, we're moving away from them. My best friend. They are cherished to me in my heart. They are home to me, and we are moving away to be with you. We are moving away because we believe in you. And we believe what God is doing here is important. And so when I say, I, I have, I anticipate, I anticipate the move that God is making here. I say it with skin in the game. The reason that John the Baptist was sent ahead of Jesus was so that he could prepare the way. Prepare the way. But his message was repentance. It was to submit your life to God. Why is that so important before Jesus arrives? Why is it so important that we submit our lives to God before Jesus then comes on in the scene? we don't surrender our expectations, then we will go forward in our own power and our own strength. If we don't submit our lives to God, we will continue to rule over ourselves. And that just does not go very well. Yes? You've been in charge before, right? You've been in charge long enough to know you shouldn't be in charge, right? <laughs> Me too. The only reason I get to preach this to you is because I, I am, I'm in it right now. I don't say to you things that, that I don't know and haven't experienced. I say... God, you are in charge of where we live. And I mean it. And when he says to move, we move. And when he says to go, we go. And this is the small offering that I get to give him. Is my submission in the cost of going. It's not a very big offering, but it's everything that I have to say yes. Yes, we will go. The 
reason repentance is so important, and it still is today, it's so important. We talked about it two weeks ago. Submitting your will, submitting your life to God is so important. Because otherwise, when Jesus shows up, you will look for your Christ, not the Christ. You will look for God to come under your authority instead of you coming under God's authority. Look, we have all prayed those prayers. God, here are the things that I need from you. We need more prayers that start on our knees saying, here I am, Lord. Send me. Whatever you have is what I want. Everything you ask is what I want to do. And only what you ask is what I want to do. No more, no less. Because we have promises that say that God will do much more than you could possibly imagine or dream of. When? When you start on your knees. When God is God and we are not. That's when. Two weeks ago we talked about submitting our lives to God. And this morning I really want to talk about submitting our church to God. All over again. It's not that this has never happened before. I, I don't really know. <laughs> but being honest, I just got here. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Let's call it resubmit. And again, I want to put this picture in your head of renewing your vows. It's not that you've never said them. But they do mean more later on in your life than they did when you said them at first. I believe. Because you know the cost now. Resubmitting our church to God and saying, what do you want to do? Because what you say is what we'll do. No matter what you say. Do you see that, that that church would always accomplish what God has set out for it to do? Because God would be in charge of doing it. <laughs> we would be the hands and feet. God does the impossible constantly in my life because God is going to do it. Do you know how long it takes people to transition from one place to another? Do you know, do you know the amount of rentals that are in Angola right now? <laughs> the reason initially that we were like, we're just not going to move, was that we couldn't afford it. But also, they didn't exist. It was a, it was a non-issue. In one week, we went from, we'll just stay in Fort Wayne and drive forever. <laughs> Each way. Each way. <laughs> but I knew it wouldn't, I knew that wouldn't work. As soon as I got here, I was like, there's too much, there's too much momentum here. There's too many amazing things that are going to happen here. I, I can't be away. But I have a solution. All the facts were still the facts. Yes? I'm still stuck far away. And so we, we started asking, but also going, God has to do it. I work in Fort Wayne. I live in Fort Wayne. All our stuff is wrapped up there. So, uh, last week, we, it, it was about a week and a half ago, I had 
someone approached us with an opportunity for a rental house. We went to see it last week. It was great. And they actually wanted us, which was great also. <laughs> I, I put in my two weeks at my job because I was like, well, then I'm going to have to do something there, not in Fort Wayne. And as soon as I put my two weeks in my job, they said, no, 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 no. Let's just transfer you. And I was like, I don't, are there positions open? And they were like, we don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> that day, I got a call from that Walmart, and they said, we do have a position open, so if you apply for it, we'll interview you. Two days later, I got interviewed for it. And two days after that, I got that job. It's just not possible. Except that God is so faithful. And when he's in charge, he's just really good at his job. <laughs> Five stars. All the way. Look, when we say... God wants to, to move in this place. It's not a, a pressure thing on you. Except to submit your life to him. Except to submit our church to him. So that he can do what he wants to do. And so we, we need uh, sometimes a prayer. We need sometimes a prayer where we can say, God, what do you want to do with us? With us. So sorry. Those hard consonants. What do you want to do? And then we'll do that. Are you on board with me here? Do you still want to move with God in this place? This is my only concern when we talk about this. Because on paper, this is a very good plan. The, the only concern is the cost is high. I don't want to play around about it. The cost of saying, God, what, what you want is more important than what I want can, can be very high. Because sometimes the things that we want the most are not necessarily what he wants. And it takes us a minute to catch up to his agenda. A couple of years ago, I, I felt like God was going to move us to Florida. I still believe that that will be true someday. But I thought it was like now. And so we like got ready to move to Florida. <clears throat> and it was not time yet. And that was really difficult. And even though it was it was what he he said he would do someday. So there's a, a little bit of discernment that has to happen as we ask God, what do you want to do in this place? I have found in churches that the greatest, uh, the greatest moves and ministries do not necessarily come from the one who's got the pulpit. They generally come from 
the congregation where God is moving in your life and where we can throw our weight behind the dreams that God has given you. That's where, like, there's a lot more traction. And so I would, I would ask you to begin to dream of what God wants to do in Angola and in our church. Ask Him. And spend time in prayer listening. excited about what's, what's happening here. I'm glad to be here at this time, in this moment. It's the right time. It's the right moment. And so this morning, I encourage you to look the Christ, to submit your life to the Christ, to submit our church to the Christ, not our Christ, not our idea, but God's idea. We pray with me. God, we anticipate what you will do during the season. This is a prayer. This song is a prayer. It goes go right along with what God was going to give with God. The Spirit of the living God falls fresh on us. Us. Individually and corporately. Let's pray this again. God bless you this week with new words, new ideas, new understanding of what he wants to do in this church, in your life, and in your family. May God bless us with 
heavenly inspiration.